Namaste A warm welcome to all of you children with the blessings of Dr. Basavalinga Patta Devaru Hire Mata Samsthana Balki Bidar District Let us start today the second session the basics of geometry. I am T.K. Prasannamurthy, retired headmaster, Jayanagar, Bangalore. I am one of the visiting faculty of Dr. Channa Basaveshwara Gurukula, Kardiala, Bidar district. So let us let me open now my first file. So yesterday we have discussed seven definitions and uh, five axioms, which is very fundamental to understand Euclidean geometry. Today the subject is the postulates of geometry. There are only five postulates are there and there are uh, five rules are there. Let us try to understand the postulates and rules of geometry. So we are trying to understand the geometrical postulates today. In Kannada it is called Aadhara Pratigne Galu okay? or Svikruta Siddhanta Galu. This is the equivalent term in Kannada. <coughs> so what do you mean by a postulate children? What are postulates? Okay, here is an attempt to make you understand the meaning of postulate. It is also a scientific statement which is accepted as a true without any logical proof but applicable to a particular branch of science and developed for the purpose of constructing a theory. Okay, so it is just like axioms only. They are also scientific statements. Postulates are also scientific statements. Both of them are accepted without any logical proof. But axioms can be applied or they are applicable to many branches of science. But postulate is applicable to a particular branch of science. That's the main, that is the subtle difference between an axiom and a postulate. So if you can apply to many branches of science, it's called axiom. If it is applicable only to a particular branch like physics, chemistry, biology, geometry, then it is called the postulates of that particular unit of the branch of science. And the purpose of the postulate is we wanted to build a theory uh, that is the main purpose, the objective of the postulate. Okay. Now having understood the term postulate, let us try to understand postulate number one. Here is postulate number one. A straight line segment can be drawn joining any two points. This is postulate number one. Okay. Only one straight line can be drawn between any two points. So let us suppose here is a point. Let us call it as A. Here is some other point B. 
Now put a question to yourself, how many straight lines can be drawn joining A and B? This is the question. The answer is exactly only one straight line segment can be drawn joining A and B. Uh, of course, the curved lines would be many. You can draw many, many curved lines, but the the number of straight lines joining any two points is always one. This is postulate number one. Okay. Uh, the same thing is coming in Canada. Okay. Eradu bindu gada mula ka kevala vandu sarada reki ennu matra yelaya bohudu. Okay. Now uh, here is one uh, uh, example. Uh, where we use this uh, postulate number one. Uh, consider a linear equation like uh, say y is equal to 17 minus 5x. So if you want to draw this uh, uh, equation on a graph sheet, what we have to do is we would have a tabular column like this wherein we give uh, some values for x and find the corresponding values of y. So the question is how many, what is the minimum number of values that we should assign for x? That is our question. Say if x is equal to 2 according to this equation y will become 7 and if x is 3 y will become 2 and if x is 4 y will become minus 3. So these are the coordinates of x and y. Now draw x axis and y axis. These are the two reference frames of references. Okay. And take a suitable scale, a convenient scale. Say let one unit in the tabular column represents one centimeter on the graph sheet. Let us try to plot the first coordinate 2 and 7. X axis 2 centimeters and Y axis it has to be 7 centimeters. So it is here somewhere here. Okay, this is 2 comma 7. Now let us uh, plot 3 comma 2. Okay, say this is 3 comma 2. Now if you join these two, we are going to go to a straight line. Okay, by joining 2 comma 7 and 3 comma 2, we got only one and only one straight line. This is a unique straight line. So, to draw the graph of a linear equation, the minimum coordinates required is hardly 2. But how is that we have given one more set in the tabular column? That is only for verification purposes only. So the third point is the in the fourth quadrant. So it is four comma minus three. So um, the third value is given only as a sort of verification. But if you are confident to draw a straight line, the minimum number of points required is hardly two. Okay. With this note, let us go to postulate number two. Here is postulate number two. Any straight line segment can be extended indefinitely in both the directions. We know what is a straight line now, how to draw a straight line. So uh, this is uh, as a figure to understand this. Here is a line segment AB. So you can extend to the left to any distance and to the right also to any distance. So that is the meaning of postulate number two. So a straight line segment can be extended on in both the directions indefinitely up to infinity. You can extend any straight line and that is the meaning of postulate number two. Okay. Now. Uh, the same thing is coming in Canada. On the Sarala Rekha Kandavanu, Anir Dishtavagi Vistarisa Bahudu. Okay, fine. Now come came the 
postulate number 3 okay uh, here it is given a straight line segment okay a, a circle can be drawn having the segment as a radius and what about uh, the center one end point as a center this is postulate number 3 let us try to understand uh, it is worth to read once again given a straight line segment a circle can be draw only one circle can be drawn uh, what about the radius having the segment the length of the segment itself as radius and uh, a line segment will have two end points you can take any one of the end point as center and you will be able to draw we will be able to draw one and only one circle okay correct don't you think it is quite obvious yes here is uh, in kannada a ondu rekha kandavannu kottaga adara yavudadaru ondu tudiyannu kendravagisikkondu hagu rekha kandada alatiyannu trijjavannagisikkondu kevala onde ondu vruttavanna matra ರಚಿಸಬಹುದು ಓಕೆ ಎಸ್ ನಾ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಲೈನ್ ಸೆಗ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಬಿ ಸೊ ಟೇಕ್ ಕಂಪಾಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪಾಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಬಿ ಆಸ್ ರೇಡಿಯಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ ಬಿ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಎ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಡ್ರಾ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ this is the one and only one circle this is a unique circle correct we cannot draw two circles or three circles okay with ab as radius with a as center or you can take even b as also center any one so in this case we have taken a as center and we could draw only one circle this is the meaning of this postulate so having understood this let us try to extend this little further here is a tabular column the two columns are number of points in the first column second column number of circles passing through them let us try to find out here is one point okay so here is one point and let us consider two points like this and three non collinear points like this okay any three points anywhere but it should be non collinear and four non collinear points somewhere like this now examine how many number of circles can be drawn through one point two points three non collinear points four non collinear points so the first one is passing through one and only one point we can draw how many circles can be drawn infinite circles can be drawn passing through that one point correct okay case 2 two points let us consider the case wherein two points are given how many circles can be drawn passing through both the points the answer is again infinite number of circles can be drawn you can imagine there are infinite number of circles can be drawn passing through the two points now case number 3 there are three non collinear points like this on a plane how many circles can be drawn through passing through all the three do you think that uh, it is infinite no only one circle can be drawn passing through all the three non collinear points recall circumscribing a triangle okay so only one circle will pass through three non collinear points uh, it is needless to say that through four non collinear points there is exactly one and only one circle passing through all the four non collinear points okay now let's go to postulate number 4 okay all right angles are equal this is postulate number 4 
okay means uh, if the measure of an angle is 90 degrees it's called a right angle so if the measure of an angle is 90 degrees then they will be all equal um right angle in fact according to euclid is a determinate magnitude and it is a invariable standard by which other angles like acute angles and obtuse angles may be measured so this is the main objective of making the postulate so if the if they have taken right angle as the determinate magnitude as an invariable standard with the help of this the remaining angles like obtuse obtuse straight angle all those things can be easily measured now ella lamba konagalu sama this is in kannada okay here is some uh, uh, figures to understand this here is a straight line okay upon which another straight line is standing like this so now if these two these are these two are called adjacent angles of a linear pair uh, in this case these two adjacent angles uh, are of a linear pair are equal then each angle is called a right angle okay now here is a right angle here is another right angle the third one you can see the fourth one all these things are right angles and the postulate says all of them are equal so far as the magnitude is concerned this is the meaning of postulate number 4 okay um let me sum up the four postulates before we go to postulate number 5 so these are this is the summary of whatever we have understood just now okay postulate one a straight line only one straight line segment can be drawn joining any two points second postulate any straight line segment can be extended indefinitely in a straight line postulate number 3 given a straight line segment only one circle can be drawn having the segment as radius and one end point as center and postulate number 4 is all right angles are equal so these are the first four postulates of geometry these are the geometrical postulate uh, children let me close this file and uh, for postulate 5 there is a separate file uh, let me try to open this okay here is uh, uh, another important postulate the fifth postulate the fifth postulate children is a very very important postulate which has made a big revolution in the study of geometry hence i am going to explain now what is that postulate number 5 so this called parallel line postulate this is in fact postulate number 5 according to euclid's volume number 1 okay uh, it can be stated like this this is euclid's postulate on parallel lines this is postulate number 5 here it is the parallel line postulate it's called a blot on euclid what do you mean by the word blot to do something that spoils the idea that people have of you okay it's a black mark on uh, euclid so what is that black mark that has spoiled the name of euclid here is a small explanation for that so postulate number 5 can be uh, stated like this if a straight line meets two other lines 
so as to make the two interior angles on one side of it together less than two right angles okay then the other straight line or segment will meet or will intersect if produced on that side on which the angles are less than two right angles wow a very very big statement without any full stop in between so let us uh, read uh, one more time children uh if a straight line meets two other lines so as to uh, make two interior angles on one side of it together less than two right angles then the other straight line is going to meet if want you can if there is any chance to produce you can produce it if it is required on that side on which the angles are less than two right angles okay it's a very simple one i think with the help of this figure you can easily understand this okay so in kannada i will quickly read this ondu jothe sarala rekiyo no mattondu sarala rekiyo onde maggalalliruva walakonagala matta 180 degree galiginta ಕಡಿಮೆ ವಿರುವ ಹಾಗೆ ಛೇದಿಸಿದರೆ ಆಗ ಆ ಎರಡೂ ಸರಳ ರೇಖೆಗಳು ಯಾವ ಕಡೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಒಳಕೋನಗಳ ಮತ್ತ ನೂರೆಂಬತ್ತು ಡಿಗ್ರಿಗಿಂತ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇರುವುದೋ ಆ ಕಡೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ಜೊತೆ ಸರಳ ರೇಖೆಯನ್ನು ವೃದ್ಧಿಸಿದಾಗ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಇದ್ದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಛೇದಿಸುತ್ತದೆ ಓ ಹೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಫಿಗರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಪಾಶ್ಚುಲೇಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ Five parallel line postulate. Here are two straight lines. Okay. Okay. They are parallel to each other. And here is another straight line intersecting them. This is called transversal. Okay. Let us call the two straight lines as AB and CD. And the parallel line as E. Yeah? And it is cutting, intersecting AB at G and CD at H. okay let us for brevity let us call the angles by numbers say angle agh as angle number 1 and angle ghc as number 2 similarly angle 3 and angle 4 okay now um look at this uh, figure uh, before that uh, you can see here very clearly uh, angle 1 plus angle 2 these are called and angle 3 and angle 4 these are the pairs of angles the pairs of interior angles on the one side of the transversal so angle 1 and angle 2 are on the left side of the transversal e up and angle 3 and angle 4 on the right side of the interior angles on the right side of the transversal e up. and you know that the sum of uh, 1 and 2 is exactly 180 degrees and 3 plus 4 is also 180 degrees but now see the two cases here here is one straight line here is another straight line and it is intersected by another straight line like this okay so let us call name them as a b c d and g it is intersecting at g and h uh, these are the Uh, the angles as 1 2 3 4 okay now what do you say about angle 1 plus angle 2 children at the same time think of the sum of angle 3 and angle 4 okay so this is the transversal e yeah uh, compare the same one with another uh, case on the right side so here is two uh, lines a b and c d and it is intersected by e f these are the angles 1 2 3 4 in the second case also examine what is the sum of 1 plus 2 and 3 plus 4 so according to the postulate number 5 angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180 degree in the case 1 
and in the case 2 angle 3 plus angle 4 is less than 180 degrees now the postulate 5 says in the first case to the left of the transversal angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180 degrees so a b and c d the two straight lines will intersect when produced on the left side of the transversal because angle 1 plus angle 2 on the left side of the transversal is less than 180 degrees so they are going to intersect uh, each other when produced on the left hand side whereas in the same case uh, 3 plus 4 in the first figure uh, in, the, in the first case 3 plus 4 is greater than 180 so look they are diverging on the right side it is diverging now let us consider another uh, figure in the right side so to the right of the transversal e e of angle 3 plus angle 4 the, the sum is definitely less than 180 degrees and so when you extend on the right side a b and c d is going to intersect on the right side the transversal when produced on the left side if we however you extend they don't intersect they are going to diverge so this is the meaning of the explanation that can be given for postulate number five so if the sum of the two interior angles on the same side of the transversal is 180 degrees then they will be parallel to each other and if the sum of the interior angles on the same side of the transversal is less than 180 degrees then they are going to intersect on that side of the transversal where the sum is less than 180 degree and diverge when the sum is greater than 180 degrees. So this is the uh, explanation we can think of for postulate number 5 parallel line postulate. Some additional informations for you children. Here are some information for you and uh, so in the very first figure at the top 1 plus 2 is 180 and 3 plus 4 is also 180. Compare this with the bottom two figures. Okay. So here are some important words, the meaning of important words that we are going to come across in our future studies phenomenon means an observable fact or event and the plural form of phenomenon is phenomena many phenomenon we are going to study in physics and chemistry in pu classes and then the word validity is also important in geometry a means to prove something is true or false that is the meaning of the word um, validity here are some equivalent versions of euclid's fifth postulate okay um, there are several equivalent versions for this postulate one of them is a uh, playfair's postulate which is given in our cbsc or uh, ninth standard textbook okay uh, Euclid's uh, fifth postulate is a very very significant in the history of mathematics it's a milestone in the uh, subject geometry especially in particular significant means uh, the word significant means having an important effect or having an important influence that is the meaning of the word significant and um, there are many many versions are there for fifth postulate uh, better you understand we understand the word version also the meaning of the word version is a copy of something that has been changed slightly so that it is different from the thing copied so this is the meaning of the word version okay so play fair let us try to understand another <coughs> important version of uh, the fifth postulate it is called play fair's postulate 
uh, it was formed during 1785 okay play face postulate here is an image you can see that so in the bigger uh, scale also it is shown now uh, <coughs> he is uh, a scottish mathematician okay <coughs> a scientist and a mathematician uh, professor of uh, natural physics at the university of edinburgh okay some more information about the playfair okay <coughs> okay a uh, playfair postulate here is uh, the playfair postulate an equivalent version for the uh, fifth postulate of euclid given a line a straight line on a plane and a point outside the line in the same plane there is a unique line passing through the given point and parallel to the given line a uh, line means uh, straight line only children we even uh, don't expect every time to say straight line so line means a straight line okay if it is a curved line we will specifically say curved line only okay look at the first uh, line so you consider a plane okay there are three types of planes are there horizontal plane vertical plane oblique plane you imagine a plane and a, a straight line on it uh, now you consider a point outside the line but it should be also in the same plane anyway outside it below above anywhere you can consider and he says there is only one and only one line that can be drawn through that given point and at the same time parallel to the given straight line this is the playfair postulate compare the fifth postulate and the playfair postulate this is an equivalent version for the fifth postulate so given a line on a plane and a points outside the line in the same plane there is a unique line passing through the given point and parallel to the given line the same thing is coming in kannada on the samatalalalli kottiro ondu reke matte ade samatalalalli aa reke ya parage kottiro ondu binduvina moolaka aa rekege samantaravagi onde ondu rekiyu haadu hogutade okay so it can be also stated like this for every line l and for every point p not lying on it there exists a unique line m passing through p and parallel to l uh, the wordings are different the same playfair postulate can be expressed in this way also okay so given a line in a plane and a points outside the line in the same plane there is a unique line passing through the given point and parallel to the given line here is a small explanation to understand the playfair postulate so here is a straight line ab and an external point p on the same plane now put a question to yourself how many straight line can be drawn passing through p and uh, parallel to ab the answer is only one okay so only one straight line can be drawn parallel to ab and passing through b so it can be also stated like this two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same straight line if the two straight lines are intersecting they cannot both of them cannot be parallel to the same line so another version of uh, the fifth postulate is the triangle postulate and you know the sum of three angles of a triangle is two triangles so uh, remember recall the uh, fifth postulate children uh, they are going to intersect where on that side where the sum of 
the two interior angles is less than 180 degree. So, if we extend it, you form a triangle and the sum of uh, those two, those three angles will be exactly equal to 180 degrees. Okay. Now, Proclus also, he has stated in a different style the fifth postulate and here it is. On a plane, if a straight line intersects one of the two parallel straight lines, then it will intersect other parallel straight line also. So consider a plane and on that if a straight line intersects two other parallel straight lines, then it will intersect other parallel straight line also. Okay, it is something like uh, imagine two straight lines on a plane and a transversal. If one transversal cut one straight line, if we extend it, it will intersect another parallel straight line also. Okay, this is a Proclus postulate in equivalent version for the fifth postulate. So, another uh, uh, version is there, this is called equidistance pair postulate. Two parallel straight lines are equidistant from each other. Okay. So, in so many ways, mathematicians have tried uh, to express the fifth postulate, the parallel line postulate, because they thought among the first five postulates, the fifth postulate, they thought it can be proved. It is not a postulate, it is a theorem. And for 2000 years, lot of discussion, effort has been put to show that uh, the fifth postulate is actually a theorem which could be proved and finally, uh, eventually they came to know, uh, I think during 18th century uh, af after the cause, you know, he established, he showed us that this is uh, not a theorem, fifth postulate is really a postulate only and it cannot be proved and during the, the discussion for 2000 long years another important branch of geometry award that is the non-Euclidean geometry. So Euclid did not require his fifth postulate to prove his first 28 propositions. Many mathematicians including him were convinced that the fifth postulate is actually a theorem that can be proved using the first, first four postulates and other axioms. Their creation is considered as a landmark in the history of thought because till then everyone had believed that Euclid's was the only geometry and the world itself was Euclidean. They thought the entire universe is full of geometry and in particular Euclid geometry. Later they came to know that it is not Euclidean geometry, it is non-Euclidean geometry. These geometries are quite different from Euclidean geometry. They are called non-Euclidean geometries. Their creation is considered as a landmark in the history of thought because till then everyone has considered that Euclid's was the only geometry and the world was Euclidean. Now the geometry of the universe we live, it has been shown to be non-Euclidean. Okay. In fact, it is called spherical geometry. In spherical geometry, lines are not straight, they are parts of great circles. Okay. This is the end of uh, one important, uh, um, uh, uh, important uh, uh, postulate, the fifth postulate of geometry. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, children, here are uh, uh, two uh, the original volumes of Euclid, the elements, okay. Uh, the 13 uh, volumes, I have taken the printout here, you are seeing this. 
okay so this is the book on euclid's the there are the this book contains uh, from volume 1 to 6 and here is another book uh, this book contains from volume 7 uh, to 30 uh, this these two books contains about 465 propositions are there so these are available uh, hard copies are available if you want you can uh, take the print out also and for these two books um uh, commentary has been made um uh, by uh, thomas heath uh, the 13 books of euclid's element translated from the text of hegberg with the introduction and commentary so you can see here this is a very fat book and in this book uh, for all the 13 volumes commentary has is also made it is worth the reading you have since you are planning to go for iit i strongly recommend you must see you must read these books also okay now uh, with this uh, i am going to uh, take up now um, uh, the last part of today's session is uh, rules okay rules of geometry okay <clears throat> okay rules niyamagalu okay there are uh, five rules in geometry is concerned what are these rules okay uh, while measuring lengths of line segment and angles we observe the following rules these were not stated separately by euclid but practically assumed by him in the derivations of new propositions we take them as additional postulates so while measuring lengths of line segment and angles uh, euclid has used uh, these uh, rules also and uh, Uh, the mathematicians uh, in the ad they thought uh, that uh, we sh- they have separated those uh, uh, postulates which are used by him and they don't want to call them as postulate they have separated it and call them as the rules only so let us try to understand which are those uh, uh, additional informations which uh, euclid has used so far as when measuring measurements are concerned okay rule is a noun so what do you mean by rule it is an established standard or guide or regulation or a principle this is the meaning of the word rule it is an established standard it is an established guide it is an established regulation or an established principle okay now with this information let us start rule number 1 here it is said every line segment has a positive length so we always say draw a line segment of 5 cm we never say draw a line segment of a uh, length minus 5 cm we never say that so line the length of a line segment is always expressed as a positive uh, in quadratic equations after solving say regarding lengths you know uh, if there will be two roots uh, sometimes one root may be positive and another is negative we neglect the negative root Uh, if the lens are uh, we are trying to measure the lens because of this rule number 1 <coughs> every line segment has a positive length this is rule number 1 now pratiyondu rekha kandavu dhanatmaka uddavannu hondiruttade okay here is rule number 2 so it is this if a point c lies on a line segment ab then the length of ab 
is equal to the sum of the lengths of AC and CB. Okay, that is AB is equal to AC plus CB. This is rule number two. So imagine a line segment, children. Okay, imagine a line segment. Here is in Canada. Okay, now here is a line segment IAB, and here is some point arbitrary point C. So if you want the length of AB, it is equal to you measure AB. You measure CB, add them, you get the total length of AB. This is rule number two. Okay, any point, you can take any point C anywhere on the line segment AB, measure AC and CB separately. If you add, you are going to length of A, the distance from A to B. See, these are uh, used by Euclid in proving propositions. But the modern mathematicians have observed all those things and they have separated it and made into rules only. So this is rule number two. Now let's go to rule number three. Every angle has a certain magnitude, has a certain measure. A straight angle measure 180 degrees. Okay. So this is rule number two. This is also used many occasions he has used it and this is rule made as rule number three. Whatever angle may be acute or obtuse, it will have some definite uh, measurement only. So every angle has a certain angle, a straight angle has a measure of exactly 180 degrees. Straight angle means 180 degrees. This is rule number 3. And the same thing is coming in Kannada. Pratyundu kono nirdishtavada parimanavannu hondiruttade. Sarala kono nurayam bhattu degree galannu hondiruttade. Okay. The last but one is the fourth rule, children. Here is the rule number 4. Something connected to measurements only of an angle. Now, if OA, OB and OC are such that OC lies somewhere in between OA and OB, then angle AOB is equal to angle AOC plus angle COB. It's quite obvious. Okay, read it once again. If OA, OB and OC are such that OC lies between OA and OB, then angle AOB is equal to angle AOC plus angle COB. Uh, the same thing is Kannada. Uh, Kirana OCU, Kirana OA matu Kirana OB gala naduve iddare aga Kona ye wo bi arate yeshirate indre, kona ye wo si, plus kona si wo bi gada arate gada matake, sama agirate and the head either. Okay, now look at this simple figure. Here is wo ye, re wo ye, wo si, wo bi, and re wo si lies somewhere in between wo ye and wo bi. And now the rule says that if you want angle A O B, it is nothing but angle A O C plus angle C O B. You measure these two angles separately and if you add them, you will get the full angle, the total angle A O B. Angle A O C and angle C O B are the parts of angle A O B. So therefore, if you measure and add them, it has to be equal to A O B. This is rule number four. Okay. The last one is rule number five. Okay. Rule number five is this. Here it is. If the angle between two rays is zero degrees, then definitely they have to coincide. Correct? If the measure of angle between any two rays is 0 degrees, then the no inclination at all between them, 
then they overlap on each other it means they coincide children uh, for everything there will be converse also for rule number 5 converse is this conversely we can put it like this if two rays coincide there are two rays are there they are coinciding then the angle between them is either 0 degrees or an integral multiple of 360 degree it must have rotated for one complete round so if two rays coincide so definitely we can say the angle between those two rays is definitely zero degrees so this is rule number 5 okay so uh, they see the same thing is kannada ಎರಡು ಕಿರಣ ಕಿರಣಗಳ ನಡುವಿನ ಕೋನವು ಝೀರೋ ಡಿಗ್ರಿಗಳಾಗಿದ್ದರೆ ಆಗ ಅವು ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಐಕ್ಯವಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ವಿಲೋಮವಾಗಿ ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಐಕ್ಯವಾಗಿರುವ ಎರಡು ಕಿರಣಗಳ ನಡುವಿನ ಕೋನವು ಝೀರೋ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಸೊನ್ನೆ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತದೆ ಓಕೆ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ಒ ಎ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಲೈನ್ ಒ ಬಿ which is super imposing on that so what is uh, where is the angle aob there is no angle aob at all they are coincide therefore we say angle boa is 0 degrees okay that's the meaning of that okay now axioms and postulates <coughs> you can have <coughs> a table like this and you can compare all of them together in this way so these are the axioms and these are the postulates okay and here is uh, the five rules that we have just now uh, revised these are this is the list of the five rules so you can have one uh, uh, print out like this so that you can keep on seeing them for quite a long time you will be able to remember all this so the same thing is in kannada also <clears throat> okay these are the definitions okay and these are the postulates <clears throat> okay children uh, now what is that i have done for all these uh, postulates and axiom means in my study room i have taken the print out of all these okay all these print out i have taken in a3 sheet and uh, i have displayed like this children in my uh, study room uh, so i will just uh, rotate my uh, laptop uh, so that you can see some of them so this is the wall of euclid okay you can see here so in uh, there are four rows are there in the first row i have displayed uh, the seven uh, definitions okay we'll slowly rotate the camera so okay so and followed by the five axioms then comes five rule postulates and at the bottom you can see the five rules so this is my study room children and i have made uh, the frames for it in wooden uh, in golden color frames and i have tried to display it in my study room like this okay uh, to conclude children i wanted to tell you one more uh, thing here uh, quickly i wanted to tell you uh, the definitions for a theorem converse and corollary quickly Uh, since uh, you are all brilliant students uh, you must be thorough with the definitions of all this but still it's my duty to recall one by one so theorem means prameya okay it is also a scientific statement like axiom postulates okay which is accepted as true uh, with the logical proof after proving it only we accept them as a true statement so that is called a theorem so a theorem means a scientific statement which is accepted as true with the logical proof uh, i yesterday also have told this in the last class in the last video 
So proof is a step by step procedure of establishing the truth of a statement or it is a process that convinces skeptical adversary. Logic means it is art and science of arguments. Okay, now converse of a theorem. In Kannada it is called Viloma. If data of a theorem is made to prove and to prove of the theorem is made data, then each theorem, each statement is called the converse of the other. So every theorem will have data, okay, hypothesis and to prove is conclusion. So theorem is made up of two parts, hypothesis and conclusion or data and to prove. So you convert data into to, to, to prove and to prove into data, you will get another new statement and that is called the converse to the given statement. Okay. So the same thing can be expressed this way also. So using the terms hypothesis and conclusion. So hypothesis is made as conclusion and conclusion is made as hypothesis then the new statement is called the converse of the given statement. I think the last one is corollary. It is also a statement derived from maybe a postulate or from a theorem which is self-evident. Means uh, no proof is required for us. It is so clear to us or uh, we can only itself we give, give the proof if required. Such obvious statement which are derived from a theorem or a postulate are called corollary. It is called upapramaya. Theorem means pramaya and corollary means upapramaya. Okay. Yes, uh, at the end of uh, after completing a theorem, we normally write QED. So it is a Latin, it is in Latin language. Q is squared. E equals a rot, D equals a demonstrandum. It is a Latin word, okay, a meaning that which is to be proved is logically proved. Is that which is to be established is established or that or hence proved. Simply you can say it as hence proved. Uh, it is framed in Kannada so nicely. We say iti prameya. Andre complete aitu. So logical agi, systematic agi, beyond doubt we have established this. So that is the end of the theorem. So it is customary uh, to write at the end of the theorem in the bottom on the right side like yours sincerely, yours faithfully, we write QED also. Uh, you know lemma, uh, we have already studied Euclid division lemma. Lemma means a particular type of uh, theorem, a proven statement used to prove another statement. It is a minor result whose sole purpose is to help in proving a theorem. It is a proved proposition which is useful mainly as a, just as a preliminary to the proof of a theorem. So we have already understood in 10th standard. Uh, Euclid's uh, uh, division lemma. I, I hope you will be understanding some more lemmas in your future. So better you must have a clear understanding about the term lemma. Okay. Uh, reductio ad absurdum. This is another important method in uh, geometry in proving uh, theorems. It is a Latin word first introduced by Euclid. It is an indirect proof. This method shows that it is impossible for that which is to be proved to be false. So this is called reduction method or indirect method or contradiction method. So deduction means the process of reasoning logically. That is from clearly stated hypothesis to a conclusion and that is called that process is called as from hypothesis to conclusion that is called deduction so is sometimes used for the conclusion of the deduction also 
okay so to conclude uh, i am remembering uh, g h hardy greatest mathematician young men should prove theorem and old men should write books so with this beautiful note i am concluding uh, today's uh, uh, session okay yes children so uh, in uh, two episodes uh, we have tried to understand the basics the fundamentals of geometry if you want to have a thorough understanding of geometry you must always start from definitions then axioms then the, with the help of that uh, postulates and in this case rules also have a beautiful understanding clear cut understanding of all these points so that your journey uh, in the field of geometry oh, would be very nice enjoyable you can enjoy each and every moment of uh, the subject uh, the geometry with this note i wish all the best to you uh, try to take i would like to take some more lessons uh, in the basics of uh, mathematics of secondary school uh, thank you children for your patient hearing all the best thank you very much